Thank you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you about innovations in the pharmacy space. So it's hard to drive around Scottsdale without seeing a, a CVS pharmacy um, on many, many corners. Um, and you all probably know us best by our pharmacies and our minute clinics where we provide an extension of primary care um, to um, uh, the community um, in a little bit um, different uh, format. Uh, but we also have uh, specialty pharmacies where we help to manage the delivery of the medications, but the management of the use of the medications for members who use specialty drugs, which are typically infused drugs or injectable drugs or drugs that need special handling. Um, but we also have a pharmacy benefits management arm where we cover over 60 million lives um, throughout the country in helping to manage the, the benefits of those individuals. So you can imagine with all of those different um, assets, we have millions and millions of data points um, that can help give us insights into what works and what doesn't work in healthcare and specifically in the pharmacy space. And so as we look at you know, our clinical strategy, it's really about reinventing that frontline interface with your pharmacist, because we know that individuals interact with their pharmacist and their pharmacy more than any other provider in the healthcare continuum. So we have, a, a, we think, an important role and really an obligation to do that well and, and um, to continue to advance that front. We have a research institute that takes these millions of data points and gets, provides insights into um, where the problems are and where the opportunities are, but then also on the back end, as we try different things, what actually works. So we take those insights and we leverage technology through all of the different touch points that we might have with a patient to try to optimize the coordination of a care around pharmacy and how drugs are delivered and used by a member. And we think by doing that, we can improve the counseling and support that you receive around drugs um, for the member. So why is this important? Well, probably the area that we spend the most time focusing on is adherence. And adherence means, you know, your doctor's prescribed a drug, are you taking it, and are you taking it um, as it's prescribed so you get the maximum benefit? So when you, you look at this data, which is data that we produce in conjunction with um, our relationship with Harvard, um, you find that the investment in drugs which is illustrated in the green here, which is money you're spending saves money on the medical spending and then also productivity of individuals measured by, um, by absenteeism and disability. So there's a tremendous return on investment for ensuring that people are adherent to their chronic medications. So as we've taken these insights, what we've done is created a predictive uh, adherence index. And what that does is to really look at the different trajectories, if you will, of why a, a patient or how a patient becomes non-adherent to their medications. So the, the top line, the, the white, um, which is mark number one, it shows you where we want people to be, always adherent to their medications. But the reality is there's a lot of different ways that, that people um, are, are fall into non-adherence. So if you look at the pink line, um, which is number six, many people drop off after their first fill. They fill a drug and they never come back for their second refill. Um, there's a lot of different versions in between. What we do with this predictive analytics tool is to identify where people fit on this trajectory, which helps us to know when we should outreach to those members, what the nature of the outreach should be, and what the duration of the outreach should be. And so we have this mapped really for every one of these curves. So then we've actually taken that a step further. So the left-hand circle actually represents everybody that's not adherent. 
But we know that there's a population of folks that we call vulnerable patients. And these are the patients that are likely to have a, a doubling in their medical expenses in the next year. And when you take those people and map them using pharmacy claims and other um, uh, um, information that we have into a predictive analytics tool focused on vulnerable patients, we call it the Vulnerable Patient Index, you can actually identify what kind of major bucket they're going to fall into in terms of the problems that they're likely to have around their medications. And that could be an adherence issue. It could be a safety issue around the dosing too high, too low of their drug, or interaction of drugs for people that have very complex regimens. Or it could just be the complex nature of their condition. And you know, we see people 12, 20, you know, and more drugs that they're taking all at the same time. And understanding how those all work and work together can be very difficult for patients to know. So it, this is the way of sort of identifying and really targeting our interventions so they can be delivered when the patient needs it, how they need it, and really focus in with more precision on how we can help address the, the true root problem. So it's not enough then to identify, but we also have to intervene. And we have lots of um, interventions in place. This slide is really meant to illustrate some of the things that we're working on in terms of piloting. So if you think about that patient with um, multiple medications, um, how does an elderly patient try to figure out, you know, opening 12 different bottles um, to get their medications for their morning? Which ones do I take in the afternoon? What might I need in the evening? We can package all those so they don't have to think about that. Here's my morning pills, here's my afternoon pills, here's my evening pills. And they can just, um, you know, ex um, receive those um, in the time that they, they need them, and it's, it's more intuitive for them. So we have also have platforms around digital growth and how we can leverage um, people's use of smart devices to, so that they can help manage their care. The point of all of this is that we have these pilots and then we take those pilots and feed that information into the insights to drive sort of the next generation of improvements in pharmacy care. So thank you.